for interpreting your audiogram, you're going to look at the thresholds for air conduction, so the amount of hearing loss is measured by air conduction, and the amount of hearing loss is measured by bone conduction. And you're going to look at these two test scores for the right ear and then for the left ear, and you're going to um, look at the relationship between the air and the bone gap, so the relationship between the air conduction scores and the bone conduction scores, and whether there's a difference between the scores will help you determine whether you have a conductive hearing loss, a sensory neural hearing loss, or a mixed hearing loss. So remember, air conduction tests the whole system, so it demonstrates loss of sensitivity for the entire system, the outer ear, the middle ear, the inner ear. Bone conduction demonstrates a sensory neural impairment, so bone conduction just tests the inner ear or the auditory nerve. And the difference between the air and the bone conduction thresholds helps you figure out whether you have a conductive hearing loss or a sensory neural hearing loss. So the air bone gap equals your air conduction scores minus your bone conduction scores. For example, let's say you had an air conduction threshold at 5 dB and a bone conduction um, threshold at 5 dB. We're all testing at 1000 Hz right now. First of all, they both fall in normal hearing. They both fall in the range of normal hearing, so that person has normal hearing. Anything from 0 to 20 is normal hearing. So you don't even need to think beyond that. Air scores are normal, bone scores are normal, normal hearing. Let's say that the person had an air conduction threshold of 35 dB and a bone conduction threshold of um, 0. So the bone conduction scores are normal. So that means the cochlea is normal and the auditory nerve is normal. The air conduction scores are abnormal because they're greater than 20. Air conduction tests the outer ear and the middle ear. We know from the bone conduction scores that the cochlea and the auditory nerve are normal. So that means the problem has to be in the outer ear or the middle ear. That means the problem is conductive. Let's say the air conduction scores and the bone conduction scores are both abnormal, but they're the same degree of abnormality. That's a sensory neural hearing loss. So the bone conduction score is 35 decibels. There's something wrong in the cochlea. The air conduction score is the same degree of bad. It's also 35 dB. So the air conduction scores are also getting messed up as they travel through the cochlea. Sensory neural hearing loss. When air conduction scores and bow conduction scores are the same degree of abnormal, or plus or minus 5 dB. The last type of hearing loss is a mixed hearing loss. The bone conduction scores are abnormal. So the bone conduction, there's a problem in the cochlea or the auditory nerve. The air conduction scores are also abnormal, but they're worse. The air conduction scores are coming across a problem in the outer ear and the middle ear, and that problem is being added to the problem in the cochlea or the auditory nerve. That's a mixed hearing loss. Sometimes with severe hearing losses, you're not sure whether a person is actually feeling the sound. Like I said, this happens with bone conduction vibrators. That's why we don't bring them up too high. Sometimes with severe mixed hearing losses, you might question the validity, again, whether or not a person is actually feeling the bone conduction vibrator. You also have to be concerned of cross-hearing, where if one ear is really normal and the other ear has a severe hearing loss, cross-hearing would be sounds that you're sending into the severe hearing loss, cutting over to the other side, and the other side picking them up and helping out the weaker ear. So to avoid cross-hearing, you mask, where you put sounds in one ear to distract it so that it can't help the other ear. We don't need to go into too much detail about this, but the example is, let's say you go to the eye doctor. The way they separate out your eyes is they make you cover up one eye while they're testing the other eye. So in order to avoid cross-hearing with audiology, when there's a big difference in the um, the degree of hearing per ear, in order to distract one ear to keep it from helping the other ear, we mask. So we send a shh sound in one ear while we test the other ear so that the strong ear can't help the weak ear. We kind of knock it out with a shh masking noise.